What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 71. We start today's stuff on the back of our big win over Hoffenheim heading to the first game of today's episode. And man, oh man, this was going to be absolutely massive. Heading into the Classica, Dortmund away. We beat them in a reverse fixture. At the start of the season, that saw us pick up our third straight win. But since then, well, so much has changed with Bayern Munich. Heading into this game at the Signal Aduna Park, top of the table, but only by a point, and only five clear of third place Dortmund as well. Lose this game, the host cut it to two, and we dropped to second. This was massive. I thought, keep a cool head and we'll be all right. This was not the start I wanted. Yep, heading into the game, I knew it was going to be big, and it was no doubt about it, the biggest game of the season domestically thus far, and the biggest since that loss to Leipzig at home early on in the season. Six minutes in, and sometimes the FIFA guys just aren't smiling. How frustrating was that shot saved by Lambert, but... Oh, it's just carnage. Ball trickles towards the line, hits the post. Bella Kotchak goes to clear it, but can only hit it against the post and into the back of its own net. Dortmund 1, Bayern 0. And we trail inside the first seven minutes, courtesy of an own goal. And after a seaman was denied on a 1-1, I thought this might just be one of those games. But thankfully, well, we know FIFA can be goal blocks at times. Yeah plenty of the game to go and that's one of the only not necessarily benefits but you know silver linings about conceding early sometimes it can wake you up you know sometimes it can wake you up but not just that remind you that there's plenty of the game to go there's plenty of the game to go so after we cut the ball back for our leveler 15 minutes in the first 20 minutes of this game was just absolute carnage lucas klosterman captaining dortmund for the game flies into a challenge. It is a definite red card. And what about this for a start to the game? Two goals, a red card, and now the ball in the back of the net for the third time, but this one disallowed. Victor Osimhen's acrobatic effort ruled out by the linesman's flag, and correctly so as well. But I knew after that red card there, it was going to be all buying after that, surely. And I thought if we keep playing on high press, we'll get some great chance to get in front for the first time. We should have done so here as well. 27 minutes in, rolled through Jamal Musiala, but fired it wide. It was 1-1 at the break, but at half time I thought... This is ours to lose now. This is ours to lose. We've had the momentum since that early on goal. We've been the better team. We've got the man advantage. And surely that second goal is coming. And it would. Nine minutes after the restart. A second for Florian Wirtz as he runs through one-on-one -on -one and drills it far corner. Slow start to the season for our attacking midfielder this year. But since then, he's been brilliant. That hat-trick away at the Bayern against his former club really was the catalyst in changing his season for us. So Dortmund won, Bayern 2. We lead in by a goal. We've got the man advantage. I thought, if we don't close this game out here, I've absolutely bottled it. 20 minutes to go. Great. Great chance to make it 3-1. Baku whips in a corner. Or Seaman wins it, but hits the post and Dortmund scramble it away. It had a goal disallowed. It hit the woodwork and it was still 2-1. With 60 minutes to go, we weren't under much threat. I thought you keep composure and we'll be all right. With 15 minutes on the clock, Kieran Tini makes the interception. Sanchez rolls through one-on-one. -on -one, beats Bella Kotchap and beats Lambert as well. The Spaniard makes it 2-2. In an absolute thriller at the Signal Aduna Park. And the lads that were down to 10 had found a leveller. And then they injured Baku right from kickoff as well. And I was thinking, this is a joke. How on earth am I not going to win this game? Three minutes on the clock. Tied at 2-2. Both teams pushing for a winner. Including Dortmund with the man disadvantage. But that gave us an opportunity. Playing a high line on the break. Baku hobbling. Rolls through Thomas Muller. He finds Graven Birch, and with virtually the final kick of the game, well, sometimes you just have to keep on going. Good things come to those who wait. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. A show of resilience on full display for this year's Bundesliga top scorer and sure to be golden boot winner. Disallow goal, offside, hit the woodwork. Third time, finds the back of the net. Victor Osimhen turns in the cutback and Bayern deservedly win it. 
Final score, 3-2, and what a game. It was without a shadow without the biggest game of the season. And it's so funny because sometimes those are the games which are the worst ones to play. Like, they're just not very fun. They're kind of, you know, be honest, they're a little bit boring or tedious at times. Not that game. Biggest game of the season. Best game of the season, win of the season, 3-2 away at Dortmund. To be fair, Dortmund really made me work for that. It really does show you the challenge of this year and how difficult I found it. They, they were playing with 10 men for like 70-odd minutes, and we only won it courtesy of a cutback in stoppage time. That shows you how difficult it is in FIFA these days. But we do get the win, a big win, and the cost it came with was this. Baku done for three months. He'll miss most of the rest of the season. And we've only got one man that can come in now and fill in for him. That's the English teenager, Walton, the new gen. I've got no idea who he's modelled on. I'll be totally honest here, but he is going to come in and start in the absence of Baku now as we are thin on the ground, as we know in terms of depth. But big win there. It extends the gap on Dortmund to eight. And heading to the second game on today's episode, the second biggest game of the season. Now we travel to Madrid, the Spanish capital, but not to the Bernabeu, but to the Metropolitano. Yep, the first leg of our Champions League last 16 tie away against Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid. And when you look at the team here, you know, I said when the tie was drawn, the Champions League knockout stages, yes, when you top it, you might think, you know, you might get a luck of the draw, but you're still going to face a tough side. And we are as well. We topped the group, but our reward, if you will, is Atletico Madrid. It's not a reward at all. This is a really good side, but looking at it, I was thinking, it's a five-star team, no doubt. I've got some great players, Anthony in from the Red Devils, Rodrigo in from Real Madrid, interestingly enough. But in the back line, I was thinking, well, Bastoni's one of the best young center halves in the game, and Van Dijk has still got a bit of ability, despite his declining years. But I was like, that defense is definitely a bit vulnerable. Like, no doubt about it. I looked at that score, and it's a five-star one. Going forward, yes, they're going to be hard to stop. But I looked at the defense, and I thought, we should definitely be scoring in that. They've only really got four proper defenders. This Atletico Madrid side is horribly unbalanced. So heading into the game, I thought, if we can get some early chances, I bet we'll get some early goals. So heading into the first leg, away goals might not count for double in European ties anymore. But my mentality is what it used to be in European ties. When you're away from home in the first leg, get your goals. Starting the game off, what a beginning. Mukoko threading the needle through to Jamal Musiala. And eight minutes in, we lead in Madrid. His second in Europe puts us in front. And after that, I was thinking, let's just keep going. Musial has made it 1-0. A second goal is surely coming. And it took another five minutes to get it. Florian Wirtz beats Jan Oblak from range. This guy started the season off and I wasn't feeling him. But since that hat-trick at the Bayer Arena, he's been lights out. Atletico 0, Bayern 2. And I just kept thinking, their defence is all over the place. Those wing-backs aren't contributing. And after Musiala went through one on one again, we re-signed him from Atletico Madrid in the summer. Don't forget... And he's just scored our third to make it 3-0, 19 minutes in. Not showing the respect with the celebration. He's back at Bayern Munich and he's dumping his old team out of the Champions League. 3-0 up, 20 minutes in. Game and possibly tie, surely over. But it wasn't. I said pre-game. You know, we'll score some goals. This is a good effect on the side going forward. So when Nicola Rovella made it 3-1, I was thinking, all right, okay. We're going to get goals, but I knew we might concede one or two as well. So I just kept thinking, well, we're probably going to struggle to keep the ball out of the back of the net. So let's just keep on attacking. Atletico were literally all over the place in the back line. I knew a fourth goal was going to come, and it did. Six yards out, a minute to go before the final, uh, not the final, so the halftime whistle. Matthias De Litt beats two Atletico boys in the air. Head time from the corner. Final score after no goals in a thrilling five-goal first half. Fletco won, Bayern Munich four put us in to the next round. Yeah, you see the stats here. Fletco had chances going forward and he got a goal as well. But I knew, I knew heading into that tie there, there's no doubt about it. We are going to get goals. We get a few in the first half in the first leg, or at least two, then I know we can take full control of this tie. Exactly what we did. Four in the final score. And I often talk about it as well. Play the game. Like, play the situation. Don't don't go in... Like, like, FIFA, for me, is one of those games where, like, you just... You have to play every single game 
you know, not necessarily differently, but you have to you have to play the scenario and the situation. If you, are. I talk about game management all the time. It's really, really important, especially when you've got a thin squad and loads of games to come. But there are games like that where I just thought, you know, like sometimes I can be a little bit slow to start games off. No doubt about that, especially this season. But you know. Games like that, I just thought, go at them. Like, go at them. We're going to score. Yeah, we might have see one or two. Yeah, we might have get a clean sheet. But so what? We'll get our reward. And we certainly did. Four in the final score. And we've got one foot in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So third and final game of today's episode. Schalke back at the Ali Ans Arena. Aiming to stay clear of Leipzig and Dortmund in second and third place. Keep on winning and win our remaining Bundesliga games and we'll be champions. Easier said than done in what has been an inconsistent first season at the Allianz but taking on Schalke definitely fancied our chances here we would take the lead early but unfortunately we would have seen another injury Walton going down we not got any more right back so that was a little bit nervy for me there seeing him go down but Wurtz would open the scoring soon afterwards and right now Florian Wurtz is just on fire Bayern 2, Schalke 0, double the score, 32 minutes in, and it was seeming as though the game was done. Just past the 20 minute mark in the second half here, a chance to make it free. Great little offload by Bauer down the left hand side, rolled back to him, and eventually Florian Burt finds the space to shoot and score and get the hat trick as well. No doubt about it. I, I wasn't keen on Verts at the start of the season, I'll be totally honest. But ever since that hat-trick, man, this guy's been lights out. Not sure about the celebration, but if he gets me a hat-trick and three points, he can do whatever the hell he wants. It's so funny as well, because sometimes people ask me, what's your favourite celebration? You just saw my favourite and my least favourite in a row. That second celebration that Verts did there, that's my signature celebration in my, my player save, if you're watching that right now. It's my favourite celebration in FIFA. That third one, what on earth is that? <laughs> Some of the celebrations are so cool. That's really weird. Like, seriously, as, as far as celebrations go, EA, I, I don't mind if that one gets taken out of the game at some point, because I'm not a big fan of that. Anyway, 3 to the final score. Walton's injury, thankfully, just a bruise. And after that big win over Schalke, we now go 6 clear of Leipzig with 12 games to go and 8 clear of Dortmund. One foot in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And as you can see now, 12 games to go. Win 11 of them, and we will be... Bundesliga champions. So that will end this episode of Grimmer, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you had it, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.